Alright, so as promised, I sent out a, com a YouTube community post thing asking for Q&A questions, and I got a bunch of them, so so here it is, Q&A video. All I have to do is get the kids to be quiet, the TV turned down, so there's no crazy background noise, and let's get into it. But as you guys can see, the weather outside is pretty crappy, we had a beautiful weekend just gone, but I didn't get to fish, just super busy trying to get this house sorted and so this house is actually for sale and I'm trying to buy another one um, yeah so just flat out and also I wanted to take a bit of break before the new season starts but I still wanted to make a video for you guys I still like doing this every week I, 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 I want to do it so this was kind of a perfect opportunity to answer some of your questions and uh, engage with you guys a little more directly because I like doing it it's good fun so kids are on the PlayStation dogs asleep in front of the fire wife's out house is quiet and get through some of these questions. So I posted this on the community tab like three hours ago and I've already got a bunch of questions, probably too many to answer. There's a few double ups, so some people, you know, someone's gonna miss out there, so I apologize in advance if I don't answer your question. And then I asked the same thing on Instagram, so I got a bunch on there as well, but I'm gonna go through the YouTube ones first and uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So the first question is from TJ Markham. Would you ever consider going to the US and bass fishing? I've actually been to the US and I've caught both large and smallmouth bass. I was there in June last year, had great fun over there. Met up with a bunch of different people, went to Texas, Minnesota, Florida and Colorado. And I actually plan on coming back this June, July uh, and doing an even bigger trip again. So definitely want to catch bass, want to do it again, it's good fun. So yeah. There's a whole video series of the whole thing, which I, I will link below. Nigel Lewis, do you tie your own flies? I do, I can tie quite a reasonable fly, and I used to tie a lot, a lot of flies. Before I got into YouTube and this whole social media thing, uh, I used to tie all my own flies. Um, I, I probably haven't tied a fly for over a year, but it's been something that I've been meaning to get back into. Just have a few beers, tie a few flies, maybe sit around with some mates and, and do a bit of that. Um, and kind of interested to film it and Maybe do some stuff like that in the future, I'm not sure. But yes, definitely can tie my own flies. Don't necessarily do tie my own flies right now. So Joey and then a bunch of like Chinese characters. Joey, Chinese characters. Some advice for fly fishing, some advice for fly fishing beginner, thanks. Um, probably pay someone, get a guide. Um, maybe buy a DVD or watch YouTube. Um, but more importantly, like the best thing for is time on the water, time with a rod in your hand. You just gotta keep at it, learn as much as you can from as many different resources as you can. And yeah, you'll just, you'll get it, yeah, it'll click. Wolf Ferguson, do you have any saltwater fishing? Do you do any saltwater fishing or spear fishing? I don't do any spear fishing. Uh, I don't think I'm ever probably gonna do that. It seems a bit freaky to me. I don't, like I can swim and I like swimming. Uh, the ocean kind of scares me a little bit though, so I don't really want to swim around out there. Uh, but I saltwater fly fish for kingfish and a few other species, um, and I definitely want to do more of that. Next one is Andrew McGlashan. Are you going to go on any saltwater specific trips? If so, will you be going to Kiribati? Yeah, I definitely like Kiribati GTs. That is definitely something that I will be doing at some point in the future. Um, Yes, absolutely. Like that is definitely something I'm gonna do. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna pay for it and how I'm gonna do it and how I'm gonna fit it into my schedule because yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Definitely happening. Tom Parsons, what is some of your bucket list fly fishing location in the world? Uh, oh, I mean, I'm not sure I'm ever gonna get there, but I definitely wanna go to, um, shit, what's that place called? 
bucket list fly fishing location. So I think definitely Dorado. So so Bolivia. Um, definitely GTs, uh, which is there's so many locations to do that. It's just picking one or three or the wall. I'd love to go to the Seychelles. That looks epic. I don't think I'll ever get there, but who knows? So next we have Matthew Hoyt. I would love to know if there is any small trout in New Zealand. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Well, there are, there's lots of tiny trout in New Zealand. They're all tiny at some point. Um, I know you're just kidding, but yeah. And I catch them from time to time, but generally most fish you catch in New Zealand are like over two pound. Okay, so Nigel Lewis, did you ask a question before? Oh, you did. Nigel Lewis, what is your favorite type of fish to fish for? Um, like, I mean, it's probably, I probably have to say trout because that's what I keep fishing for, but that may have something to do with that's the main species that's in front of me um, to go fish for. But I think, I don't know, it'd probably be a saltwater, like, I've never caught a GT, but I suspect I would love doing that and want, want to keep doing that forever if I could. Kingfish are pretty cool, love fishing for them. That is really good fun. Yeah. Okay, so Chris, Chris Ray Bruce. Do you have a spot in the world that you'd like to trout fish but never have? Um, it's probably heaps, but uh, I've seen some really cool looking rainbow trout that come from Russia, like some big rainbow trout. I'm not sure exactly where it is in Russia, but somewhere very wild in Russia has some excellent rainbow fishing, which I think I would like to check out someday. K Dearborn 2. When sight fishing, how can you tell if it's a fish or a rock? Love from Alaska. Um, so, generally, like when I'm looking for fish, likely shape, likely color, likely lie, and then movement. Um, that all those things don't necessarily give it away. But what I tend to find, and what I tell people, is that rocks will have sometimes, quite often, have a hard edge that you can kind of definitely define. Um, well, obviously they do have that. A trout will quite frequently look almost like a smudge, like you're not quite sure. It's very smudgy. And sometimes I can't tell, sometimes I fish to rocks. So Eric Eric Mackay, what species of fish, what species of freshwater and saltwater fish would you like to catch on the fly and why? Uh, all of them and because I want to catch all of them. Like that's a pretty huge list of um, things like freshwater again dorado i'd love to catch like a big proper atlantic salmon uh saltwater fish gts barramundi really want to catch barramundi uh and there's probably like i mean uh, yeah. to write it to find a, you know a small list would be very difficult for me i want to catch all of them uh avi kovriguru avi kovriguru when casting a nymph rig, where do you try and land your flies in relation to your strike indicator? Uh, kind of depends on the actual fishing situation, but if I'm fishing really, really deep and wanting to get the flies down deep, like fishing the Tongariddle, big pool on the Tongariddle, uh, the closer you can have the flies land to your indicator, the faster they sink. If you can imagine an indicator and then a straight leader and then your flies, if it lands straight and tight like that, it actually has to swing down underneath. Uh, which can actually take quite a bit of time. In fact, you can go right over the top of the fish before your flies are even get down there. So I kind of like to do a lot of roll casting, kind of try to underpower it so the leader kind of collapses right beside your indicator and they go straight down. Other times I just try to make sure I don't put them in the trees. Bowden Braden, Braden Langle. How do you know what particular flies to use when going for trap? Man, I just kind of, like it's, it's far more about drift than it is actually what you tie on. Um, but like caddis, mayfly, any nymph like that, as long as it's size 14 or smaller, size 12 or smaller, I mean you can't really go wrong. If you present that well, generally the fish is going to eat it, and if it doesn't then you just change to something else. Not really a big proponent of fly matters. I mean it does, but it doesn't. Just fish it well. The Notorious Pig on Fly asks, have you been to the San Juan assume that he means the river and not the worm if not would you go would you want to go yes absolutely I think they got is there really good brown trout fishing in the San Juan River what is it and like I don't even know what state that's in but I've heard of it it's a very famous river and yes I would love to go fishing so Carol Tho Carol 
Tholen. What do you think of sage reels? Uh, I used to own a lot of sage reels and I love them. Um, I haven't fished one for a long time. I am actually sponsored by Loop, so all my reels are Loop reels and I love them and those things are absolutely bulletproof. So at the moment I love uh, Loop reels, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with sage reels. But I do think no one makes a tougher, stronger, more badass reel than Loop. I genuinely think that. Okay, Griffin B TWS21. Would you ever fish with subscribers if they came to New Zealand? Yes, yes I would, and yes, yes I have. So, yes. I'm gonna have a quick look on Instagram now so I get some from both locales. This one literally just came through from Austin Pedley. Yes, that's it. Biggest rainbow caught in the Tongariro River. Biggest fish I've caught out of the biggest rainbow I've caught out of the Tongariro is probably like six pounds. Maybe, yeah, definitely not more than six. Um, and that's a really good fish from the Tongariro. Uh, there are a few really good ones that you caught every year. In fact, Alex caught an 11 pound rainbow there years ago. He didn't, he didn't even want to come fishing that day with me on the Tongariro, but I dragged him out there and he caught an 11 pound rainbow, so it was well worth it. But that's the biggest fish I've seen get caught. The biggest fish I personally have caught, rainbow trout, would be six pounds. Ed Hussey? Ed Hussey? Hussey? Ed Hussey? Do you have a daytime job? If so, what do you do for work? So I'm a mechanical fitter. I spent, I've been working in the hydro electricity generation sort of area for like 13 years or something now, 15 years, like a long time. So that's what I do for a day job. And then I do a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, I have too many jobs it feels like sometimes. Aaron Shaw, uh, what's your rating on the loop queue for the price? $350, that's possibly New Zealand or it might be cheaper than that, I don't actually know. Um, I love the loop queue, it's my current go-to rod. I use the loop queue and the loop queue reel. They're just, the for the amount you pay for the combo, I just think they're absolutely awesome. I'm about to buy another two for guiding rods. And yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about buying one to do a giveaway on this channel. Let me know if that's something you would uh, be interested in. I'm sure you would. Now this one's from Zevan de Helele. Zevan de Hay. Zevan de Hay? Uh, another one off of Instagram. Why don't you do more two-handed swinging for those large trout or even urine infant for that matter? Seems like you have a lot of good water for that around you. Are there other people urine infant around NZ or has that not hit hard over there yet? Thanks for the videos, man. Ah, thank you for the question. Um, so, uh, two-handed, I, yeah, I, I haven't done a lot of that recently. Um, I, I love doing it, but every time I, I, it hasn't been that productive for me recently, and yeah, I don't know. I need to do more, I should do more. Lots of people wanna see it. Um, I kinda like, I kinda go out there trying to catch fish, and I know how to do that nymphing. Uh, and it seems to make better videos when I actually catch fish. But I've swung a lot of flies during this um, during this winter. Uh, just a lot of it hasn't made it into the video. But I will try and do that. Try and do more of that for you. As for urine imp thing, I've never actually given it a go myself. I've got a couple of buddies that are heavily into it, um, and it's very popular in New Zealand. In fact, a ton of people around here um, urine imp. I'm probably going to cop some slack for saying this, but me personally. If you're not aerializing a fly line, I'm not really sure you're fly fishing. So, I mean, you're in a thing, I know it's a great way to catch fish and there is a lot of skill in it and a lot of, you know, it's different. Um, but for me, it just, I don't know, it doesn't interest me that much, but I, I do want to have it, give it a go. I've got a guy, a mate that's like pro at it. So I'll be meaning to go out this window with him and get him to teach me to do it. We just haven't got around to it, but it's something I'm going to look at just because a lot of people ask about it. Uh, Joshua's story, why do you roll your waders down? Because it's more comfortable. It gets hot with them, you know, it's just more comfortable. Uh, JT Loops, what is the rainbow trout you always talk about? It's just the, just rainbows that are good buddies of mine. So, and they're all good buddies, so they're all rainbows. If that makes sense. The last one, Geordie Krusey, 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 Geordie Krusey. Have you ever thought of making a trip to Alberta? Yes, a lot. I used to think about it years ago when I, uh, well, Canada in general, I wanted to come to Canada uh, to snowboard. I used to do a shitload of snowboarding before I even started fishing uh, and I wanted to go there. Never made it, but 
there's some really cool bull trout and I know a few people up there so yeah I'm definitely coming to Canada one day that's probably another freshwater fish that I should have added to that list earlier is a bull trout it's probably enough in this video it's probably well and truly long enough so yeah that's it there's one more weekend it's currently the 24th of September so we've got like eight days or something like that I do terrible math but something like that until the new season opens um, really looking forward to it anyway I thank you guys for being patient in this little absence of my regular scheduled programming um, it'll all come back to normal and hopefully yeah, even better in the uh, post October sort of spectrum so that's it for me thank you guys so much for watching I hope you learned something about these questions or if you I want to do this again so I'll leave it a month or two and um, maybe do one leading up to Christmas or something and uh, yeah that's it for me thank you guys so much for watching peace Thank you.